If nothing else, having this channel has given my creative side a kick in the pants. Before this, I only pulled out the paints once a month or so. But in the pursuit of content, my art production has drastically increased. After the intensity of 16 videos in the first eight weeks, it was nice to chill for a bit. The previous experiment with sepia was so low-key and enjoyable that I decided to do a similar treatment with Payne's Gray, or as I like to call it, PG in the house. This format worked last time, so M. Graham on top, Daniel Smith on bottom. You may have noticed I have a lot of plastic mixing palettes. They come in packs of five at Dollar Tree. This art thing is a never-ending road trip where you pick up and drop off things along the way. At this point, I haven't reached the porcelain pit stop, but I was told it's just up ahead. Am I obsessed with color? I don't think so. I appreciate it and am fascinated enough to pursue further study. But I'm not going to drop everything and chase a degree in color science. And while I'm definitely intrigued by watercolor characteristics, there's no desire to mull my own paints. Heck, I don't even pay attention to pigment numbers. So I don't think of myself as a chromophile. Do I want all the watercolors? Yes, but that has more to do with collectoritis.
plastic mixing palettes are not ideal for watercolors. It's called beading when the paint forms in spots rather than a single pool. I thought I'd washed them well enough, but it's possible I missed one. All right, it's my fault. I did not use the toothpaste trick. I chose to save it for its intended hygienic purpose and just deal with the in-palette consequences. Just like going out in the rain without an umbrella. It's a thing. I like to think of this as PG's Dark and Stormy Mix. Cue the lounge beats. And once again, I'm getting strong mystery vibes. I detect the presence of Mr. Green, Miss Scarlet, Professor Plum, and Mrs. Peacock at least. Though who beat Mr. Gray with a cue in the lounge is still unclear. Here's a reminder of just how bright those colors were before PG got his pigments on them. But don't go yet. Here comes the comparison with the sepia card. Starting with the M. Graham lineup and then on to Daniel Smith. There are similarities, but there are also differences. Since Payne's Gray has a blue cast, the yellows turned noticeably greener, and Quinn Rose got nice and purpley, which is exactly how Mr. Gray ended up. Green and purple. Yeah, these were fun, but I'm not doing it with every color. I mainly just wanted to get familiar with sepia and Payne's gray. I think they're both considered neutrals, right? And as of now, they are must-haves in my watercolor palette. I'm happy to share this mixing experience and to leave you with unsolved puzzles, such as what was a cue doing in the lounge instead of the billiard room? And are chromophile and collectoritis even real words? Until next crime, stay artsy, my friends.